Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be testing out an Amazon product that I came across. I am an Amazon addict. If there's someone that shops all the time on there and deserves a prize, it would be me. So I went on a rabbit hole on products that I can test out on Amazon because I absolutely love the quickness of it. And I came across this bad boy. It is from the brand You Shine In. It's a solid nail glue. So when I saw solid and nail glue in a container, I was like, I need to buy it and I need to test it. So I've been a huge fan of press on nails just because they're super quick, super easy. The longevity of them are amazing. They're gonna stay on until you're ready to take them off. It's just super, super easy for someone that is extremely busy just like I am. You pop them on, put them in the light, you're ready to go, you got some nice durable extensions. So when I saw something that's gonna make my life a little bit easier, you bet I needed to order it. So here we are. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys, you know, the goods, the bads, or just my thoughts in general. So if you wanna know how well this works, definitely keep on watching. I'm also gonna be doing a very cute Valentine gnome set. Definitely looks a lot more complicated than it really is, so I hope you guys give it a try as well. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Getting right into the video, I am so excited to be finally using this product. I've had my hands on it for a good minute. I just didn't have time to actually use it. You guys already know that I've been obsessed with using press on nails and to just make it an easier process excites me even more. So here I'm just taking my tips. I'm using the Good Trade tips from Amazon. They are my go-to favorite extra, extra, extra long tips. And I'm just working on filing the cuticle area. I already went ahead and trimmed them. And so I'm just focusing on getting that cuticle area nice and perfect. My ring finger here curves in, so I'm making sure that I straighten that out simply by putting it on my nail and then seeing what side I need to file and then I go ahead and file it until it fits perfectly when I place it straight onto my nail. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prep my nails. I debated on prepping them properly or not, but because my cuticles need a little bit of love, I figured I would just go ahead and do that. So I'm going in with my e-file, always at 4,000 RPMs. If you guys are new to doing nails, please make sure you use very, very light pressure and do not go above 4,000 RPMs on your e-file speed because you can definitely cause some damage. So I'm just gonna go in and buff off the shine very, very gently, very low speed again, and very light pressure when doing this process. Next, I'm gonna be going in with my cuticle ball bit. I'm not gonna be doing like extensive amount of filing just because I'm trying to keep the integrity of my nails. I have been terrible and I actually ripped off my last press on set that I had. I had this like moment after being sick that I just wanted them off and I ripped them off. So I've been actually using and testing a cuticle oil that's supposed to strengthen your nails and help them grow. Um, so far, I like it. So if I notice a huge difference, I'll definitely recommend it to y'all. But so far, the only thing that I've noticed is that they are a little bit on the harder side, like my nails don't bend as easy. And I've been having to trim them a lot more often than I typically would. So I don't know if it's like a placebo effect or what, but so far so good. I'm gonna go in with this product here. I did actually go in and buff also the inside of the tip just because I don't know how the product is going to react. But you guys, this stuff, first of all, the packaging, I was like, what in the heck happened here? <laughs> it looks like it got burnt. And then I'm just peeling off the little protective layer and I actually thought it had more plastic. I thought that was plastic right there. So you see me kind of scratching at it. And then I realized that it was an actual product. So instantly I'm gonna scoop some out with a tip. I'm trying not to put my fingers on it because I don't want the oil of my fingers to affect it. Also, just wanna see how easy it works. And I went ahead and tested it on my pinky as you can see and I was like, okay, what in the world? This is actually pretty freaking cool. So my thought process on looking for a product like this is it's really, really hard to do press on nails on yourself, especially with a very loose gel that typically kits come with. So I was like, poly gel is a little bit too sticky for my liking. And I've seen people successfully do that. But again, on yourself, it's really, really hard to really just get it all perfect. And then I went back and actually looked at the instructions to make sure I was doing it properly. And I really didn't get much answers from the packaging. So I just figured I would go ahead and kind of like spread it out. 
And again, for testing purposes, I'm going to be priming with a triple X bond from Not Polish on my ring finger, middle finger, and index finger, and I'm leaving the pinky and the thumb with no primer because I wanna see how it reacts with really little to no prep on the nail um, on its own. I've tried it before with other products and it works perfectly fine, so I really wanted to test this one out and see how that works. So I'll be updating you guys in a later video on that. And pretty much just super simple. I'm scraping it out with the cuticle part of the tip and I'm getting a very small amount because I don't want it to overflow a lot. And I pretty much just start pressing from the cuticle area down towards the tip. You essentially just apply that pressure first in the cuticle area and then start lowering the tip closer to your nail bed and the product will start gradually pushing downwards towards that free edge. And again, I'm trying to like really not touch it at all, but whenever you kind of scoop it out, you have to really put it under that cuticle area. And then you guys can see how freaking easy it is. I'm not curing in between each nail. I wanna see how they hold on to the nail on its own. And so far, so good. I am loving this super easy process. It's not gonna take forever to dry like acrylic does sometimes when using them as a press-on method and you're able to kind of just move it around until you're ready to cure it but they're not gonna pop off like it would with a very loose gel product so i'm very excited to finally use this and just see how it goes i love the application it literally took pretty much no time as you guys can see i've had them on now for one day so far so good they seem to stay on there i've been kind of pressing on them here and there to see if they're gonna pop off and again, so far, so good. So as expected, they are on there pretty sturdy. And I'm just making sure that I'm cleaning around that cuticle area so that there's no product that's leaking out. And it's very, very easy. I'm just using my finger and kind of scraping at it and it almost comes off extremely easy. So it honestly made me a little bit nervous because I was like, if it's just scratching off just like that, super easy and I don't need any product whatsoever. I was like, is it just gonna pop off? But the only one that I noticed kind of lifting was that pinky, which I think I honestly just kind of pressed it up against something and it started lifting. We're gonna go ahead and cure and you can see me turn off the light very quickly because I did get a heat spike. I completely forgot to do the low setting option on the light, which if you guys are not familiar with LED lights, the Kiara Sky one comes with an option where you can do low heat mode and that is the 90 second option which i highly recommend because when you are applying a thick gel based product it can cause heat spike and i promise you it freaking hurts if you don't have a low heat setting on your led light i will recommend to kind of put it in there take it out quickly put it back in take it out so it kind of releases the heat from the gel and you're not going in full force so hopefully that is helpful as well I'm just going in with my hand file and I'm gonna be filing these into shape, making sure that I'm squaring them off perfectly. And then there's a few of the nails that look a little too wide for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and file the sides also, making sure that the sides are perfect and flush the sidewalls of my nails. And then we're going in with my e-file once again. I have it at a speed of 10,000 RPMs and I'm using a five in one bit and we're gonna be going in and making sure that that cuticle area is nice and flush. These tips are a little bit on the thicker side than a lot of press on nails are, but I like it because I know that they're not gonna crack or break or anything like that. So the only downside to these tips is the fact that you have to go in and really really make sure that you file it good and even then i thought i did a good job and i felt like they were a little too bulky still once i went in with my nail art so just make sure you guys are like aware of that and paying attention to making sure that it looks perfect and flawless now again, I will be updating y'all on these nails and how long they last, but so far, 10 out of 10 on the easiness and quickness of doing my nails. Now I'm gonna be going in with the Profiles Backstage Sponge Buffer. It is extremely fine, so I think it's perfect for press-on nails, especially if you just wanna mattify the surface and then go in with your gel polish. It's not gonna remove a bunch of layers. These nails are already pretty thick, so you definitely don't wanna overfile it by using your e-file and it really doesn't need much. You can honestly just go straight in with the gel polish, but for whatever reason, I feel a little bit more comfortable by buffing it first. 
Now I went ahead and tested the pink just to make sure that I liked it and I felt like it was perfect for the vibe that I was going for. So we're gonna be using the Semi Pink BB Gel from Profiles Backstage. It is a builder in a bottle type of gel. So it's very, very thick. It's super, super sheer. It's definitely meant for strengthening your natural nail. Like if you want a good base on your nail, that's gonna help them not crack and anything like that. It's really, really good for that. You can also use it as an extension. Um, I know one of my coworkers actually used it to extend one of her client's nails that was broken and she had natural nails, didn't want acrylic on them. It worked really good for that as well. And then as you can see, I'm just using it as my color. I love the sheerness of it and I love the shade of the pink. So I figured it would be perfect. I'm just gonna go in with a thin layer of that. I'm trying to get it on there as nice, thin and even as possible. It is a little tricky, but as long as you just focus on Kind of applying it nice and thin you should be good we're going to be popping that in the light for a full 60 seconds next i'm going in with my matte top coat from not polish and i actually used the wrong bottle so once i finish up there's a little bit of pieces that are shiny and i was so mad at myself but it worked fine we are all good this is actually my matte top coat that i use for the pop-off method reason why the top you can kind of see it at the beginning when i started using it it's all scratched up and that was my indicator that this is a bottle to not use on my actual nails it's for my pop-off method because it has cuticle oil in it like it has been contaminated with cuticle oil so here we are using it to mattify the background of my nails it ended up working just fine and i ended up going in with shiny top coat afterwards so spoiler alert i am using gloss it for the finished result i'm going to start off my nail art by using a concoction of different colors so really i'm just going to list them down below and kind of mention them throughout the process and i'm going to be doing a little gnome I'm sure you guys saw by the thumbnail, but I thought this was such a cute design. I did find my inspo from Pinterest and I talk about using the internet as your inspo for everything. I feel like it's very, very useful. And I honestly, I think searched Valentine drawing or something like that on Pinterest. And I got this cute little gnome photo and I was like, I need to do that. It is adorable and just perfect for Valentine's day. So here we are. I'm gonna go in with the heart, pretty much outlining it with a bright pink. And then I'm going in with a lighter pink and then with a super light pink. And I'm pretty much gonna try to ombre that. Very, very simple, easy to do. Um, and then we're adding in some white as well, just to kind of give it like a little glare effect. And then once I'm done with the heart, we're gonna be outlining the nose. I'm actually using one of the new gel liners from Not Polish. This one is the brown um, one is like the darkest one called Chocolate Shakes. Super, super beautiful. It has an undertone of a deep red. So I figured this would go perfectly and I can camouflage it very easily by layering on different colors. So this was like a really good option to kind of shade or draw out, sketch out the design first. So definitely recommend that. And then we're going in with its beard, just white. I'm kind of just infilling the area, spiking some of the little outer areas out slightly. And then throughout this entire process, I am using my Not Polish Liner Detail Brush. It is absolutely amazing and I've been using that a lot recently. And then for the nose and our little hands, I used a combination of a very light brown color and mixed that with pink just to give it a little bit more of like a skin like tone and i'm just infilling that i did go ahead and draw on the little hands as well and then we're going to be going in and outlining everything and adding all the little details with that same dark deep brown color that i used Again, we're in there adding in some shading with that really dark brown and I just kind of went in and with a very very small amount and more of a dry brush I'm kind of just adding in 
that little texture that you see on the nose, the little shadows. And then for the hat, we're going in and just outlining it and making sure that it kind of pops a little bit more. And then I'm also going to be shading some of those areas as well by just taking some of that paint and kind of smearing it around the corners and some on the other side as well. And then of course to add some dimension to the beard, I'm taking that exact same color and we're just doing little lines randomly on there to kind of show the fact that it's actual hair and not just a blob of white. And then for the finishing touches of this cute little guy, we're going to be adding some hearts on the hat and hearts around as well. The original photo had sunflowers and pink, but I'm going to be adding that on the ring finger instead. Now for our flowers, I started off with the outline of the center and then I'm going in with a very light pink liner and we're going to be doing the petals. Now this is our rough drawing of the finished result. So I'm pretty much just starting off with one layer and then we're going to be adding tons of dimension in there with different colors and just really making it pop by the end. So this is super, super easy. Just focus on doing like different curves of petals and it'll all tie in together once you finish it. So again, very light pink and then we're going to be going in with a combination of red and darker red and then white. So you'll see me do all that process as well. So here I'm starting off just with the red and I am kind of just flaking it towards the center, focusing on the center specifically. And then I'm going to deepen up that area closer to the center with the darker deep red. And you'll kind of see it all come together. I also just did random white lines in there as well to add a little bit more dimension. And then finally, we're going to be outlining every single little petal with that same brown color. And then the center is a combination of a light brown with a dark brown. And then I'm going to be adding tiny little dots of that same dark brown color inside. And then at the end, I actually added a little bit of black as well. Now for the index finger, I figured I would just do a bunch of different hearts. I used pretty much all the colors that I used throughout the set and kind of just covered the entire nail. And then for our pinky, we're going to be doing a deep French type of glitter nail. And I actually did a neon pink line in the center as well, which you'll see at the end. Added gloss it from Not Polish as the finishing touch. That pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton. And I'll see you guys next time.